surprise I'm back with another video this is going to be a tutorial so it, I'm not going to do everything in detail um, it's kind of a walkthrough of how I have been making some tags over the last couple of days um, like this one I hope that's in focus and it's paper on the back stitched on so there are lots and lots of possibilities for these and I've already thought of um, probably about 20 different things that I'm going to do with these as well as making them into tags. So I'm going to just give you a run through of how I do that once I've sat down and got myself comfortable. Okay, so um, the first thing you will need is um, napkins or an image uh, that you would you can stamp onto tracing paper. You could use um, the dress print, the dress pattern um, paper, and you could stamp onto that, or you could use napkins. So these are napkins, and um, how I'm going to show you today, that's also made with napkins. So the first step is to take the napkin image that you would like to use, and I'm using this butterfly, and tear around the edges. And while I'm doing this, I just want to say thank you for the support for all of the all of the other two tutorials I've done, um, because I've had some really, really lovely comments and feedback on those, and I didn't think for one minute anyone would really want to watch anything that I was making, and I certainly didn't think anyone would want to listen to me talking. Um, it's funny isn't it? I'm sure everyone else is the same but I actually hate listening to myself. I never watch my videos back because it just drives me crazy. So anyway, I'll talk a little bit of wing with that but that's okay. So that's, that's basically step one. Um, making the image that you want. The second part that you need to do is cut your canvas. Now this is part of, I mean I have like phew, meters and meters of this stuff. This is artist grade canvas and this is for oil painting. So it's thick, it's sturdy, it's really really durable and it is a fantastic fabric to work with. You can do so much with this obviously as well as painting oil onto it. So I've cut out um, a, a rectangle that's just about big enough, big enough for my butterfly. So what I'm going to do is to cut the second one, and these are my fabric scissors. I'm just going to pop one down and I'm just going to roughly cut around it. It does not have to be perfect because you are going to fray the edges of this um, quite, quite a lot. So it does not have to be perfect. So we'll, we've got our two little, two little squares. Okay, so we're going to use Mod Podge for this, but first what we're going to do is we're just going to fray these edges. And this is really, really easy to do. You can just pull a couple of fibres. I mean, I pull three or four from each edge and just pull those off like that and do that all the way round. And this stuff gets everywhere. I mean, I can hoover and two days later, I can still find the stuff, it's like glitter. So once you've got your initial fraying done, to soften those edges, you can just rub them with your fingernail. And over time, this fraying will become really, really soft and woolly. And you can just give it a little rub between your fingers. And this actually makes this part of my hand hurt when I've done quite a bit of it at once. So just be careful if you have repetitive strain injury or anything similar to that. So just fluff out those edges. The longer you do this, the softer the edges are going to become. But you can kind of see, you can get the idea what you're going to end up with. I'm just going to do one of these for now because I've got various stages ready to show you. So I've got my Mod Podge and I've got my my brush. This is the brush that I always use for glue. I hope you can see, you might zoom in a little bit. 
there we go um so what you're going to do is get some glue and you're going to fill the whole square that you have and that's important because you want the fabric to have the same effect all over if you only mod podge the middle bit you're going to get an edge a kind of um, shadow all the way around your butterfly or your flower or insect or whatever it is you decide to mod podge so we've got our canvas glued and then we are going to very gently push down whatever picture it is you've decided to do it's like that and then you're going to mod podge very gently over the top now you have to be more gentle than you would be if you were decoupaging onto paper or card because for some reason the fabric makes the tissue much much more um, prone to ripping and tearing so now we have our decoupaged piece of linen okay so I'm going to pop that over there to dry and I'm going to clean my surface you wouldn't believe that I didn't clean it would you looking at the state of it now I'm not going to use this for a while so what I do is if I'm temporarily not using my glue brush I wrap it in a baby wipe um, I wouldn't recommend you do it with paints because you don't know how the um, how it will affect it but I actually do I always wrap my brushes in a baby wipe if I'm going to be using them again later so that's that bit done for now so um, this is one that's dry now this is really bendy it's kind of got the same effect as a latex um, the Mod Podge really holds the image I mean if you if fold it in half it probably will crack but it's got it's got a lot of giving it so what I would then do is let's just say this is my the one that I've just done like that. this is the same size so I've got this roll of hessian and I again I'm doing this by eye I would cut my piece of hessian I would fray the edge by pulling out maybe two fibres from the side and as you can see that is going to fit on there quite nicely. Can you see? So that is what I would do next. These ones are not going to be obviously the same shape and size as the previous ones I've made. So these are the square ones. So this is all dry and I'd leave this quite a long time to dry and then I pop it over the, the hessian and I run that through my sewing machine so I get something like that. I must admit the first one I did I glued because I was a little bit concerned about putting hessian through the machine but it worked fine. Um, my old machine would not have coped with that at all. So that's the next stage and then You've got, I would lay this over the top of my canvas and cut, this is actually four and a half by three inches. So you've got your little square with your image on already and you've now got a piece of canvas that's ready for your tag. So what I've done is I've then cut a piece of, this is mixed media cartridge paper and it's quite a good quality one and I literally ink all the way around the edges of that so I've got a nice edge. I don't actually ink this yet because it's a bit floppy. You can, you can do it but I can. And then what I would do is I would run that through my sewing machine. I'm, I've not risked sewing this all together as yet. I've cheated a little bit. So then you've got this sewn and you'd have that sewn. So you would have something like this. My bobbin thread ran out actually on that. That's why it looks like it's, it is a double layer of thread because the bobbin thread ran out. So I've gone round with my ink and I've inked the canvas 
and slightly inked the Hesse and it doesn't really show but you can, you can slightly see that it has been inked. And then what I would do is I'll turn this over and I've found this is this is the, sorry this is the high tack fabric glue that I use for all of the fabric that I use. Um, I was a bit concerned this was not going to stick but it absolutely has. Now this one I've stuck solid and I mean that's not going anywhere that's well and truly stuck but be actually before I do this I've made I'd made some canvas stamps and I've done these because um, I wanted to have a go I was putting it on the front of a journal and I wanted to see which stamp I liked the best so I stamped four out and you can tell that one's missing because that's the one I used on the front of a previous journal. So that's printed on there. I've used my stays on ink. I'm sorry, this is where it starts to get a bit pear shaped because <clears throat> I'm just, so I'm gonna have a little mouthful of coffee. Lovely. So this is the stamp that I've used. I've had this um, literally just sitting over there. So hopefully it's not too dry and I'm going to stamp the back and this stays on ink really does stay on the canvas it's brilliant so there we've got our stamp to give us a background and then I will take my fabric glue but this time I'm going to turn this into a pocket too so let me just double check I'm going to go along this edge and along this edge. It's not going to be a very wide or a very deep pocket, but it's going to be a pocket. And I'm going to go along there. And I'm putting quite a decent amount of glue on. You wouldn't normally need this amount of glue for fabric, but because the Hessian and the canvas will both suck it in, it will draw in the ink, so you do need to have a reasonable layer on there. And then I'm going to line that up and I'm going to stick that down and it doesn't need much pressing but it will take a little drying time this fabric glue does generally dry um, quite rapidly but because this is um, hessian it's going to need a little bit longer because it is quite, bit, um, quite thick you can clamp it you can put it under something heavy, um, but I've just found once you've kind of pressed that into place, that is not going to go anywhere. It might take a couple of hours to dry, but then what you will have is you'll have a little pocket there. If you wanted to, you could put this through your sewing machine and stitch that all in. Um, but because the Hesse, it has made it quite thick because you've got two layers of canvas, the Hesse and, and the mixed media paper. So I would leave that as that. Now, obviously I now have two of those. Once this is dry, obviously I haven't got time to wait for it to dry, this is when it's easier to ink the edges because it's a little bit more solid. So you can go round with your ink. You can use a permanent ink or this is just a distress ink, a Tim Holtz, obviously. Uh, what have we got? Vintage photo. Um, just to give that a little bit more of a colour around the edge. Um, I have, where are they, oh I don't know, I've done some with old paper and that's quite a green, a green colour, so I'll just carry on inking this and there you go, so I've now got two tags. Now this, um, this technique and this kind of fabric, you can use, it can be used for so many different types of things. You can, um, like I said, you can print onto canvas and stitch muslin under it and sew it to the front of journals. You can turn them into tags. Um, I'm making a pen roll at the moment because um, the leather that I've got is just it's just not really suitable for a pen roll. So as you can see, this is already started to dry and it does curl up, but don't worry about that because it dries and it's so pliable, you can just bend it into whatever shape you want and flatten it out really nicely. As you could see by these ones, they're nice and flat. 
so that's fine. Um, these would also make fantastic, this is going to probably be a pocket in a journal. Um, so there's loads and loads of different things you can do with them and the canvas is actually not very expensive but it isn't very easy to get hold of. You might need an art supplier um, or if you've got a haberdashery near you, ask them if they can get you some artist canvas in stock. So well, that's what I had to do anyway. Um, here in the UK you might have more luck elsewhere but it isn't that easy to get hold of. So that's um, that's the little tutorial. Um, I hope you found it interesting and obviously this um, I won't ink that one till it's sewn on there either. So thank you for watching and putting up with me. I hope I made sense and at least you've got, you know, hopefully you've got some idea of what you can do with canvas and hessian. <laughs> um, if it's inspired one person then that's been marvellous. So thank you again for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.